Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. And today we are going to talk about the success of Venom, obviously still going, and also some sequel details, but very small sequel details. But before we begin, I'd like to mention our sponsor for this video. Golden Apple Comics has been the go-to place for comic books here in Hollywood for 40 years. From epic signings with the industry's top creators to visits from Hollywood's biggest stars, this family-owned business is a mandatory stop for anyone visiting the Los Angeles area. Golden Apple even publishes their own comics now. Be sure to pick up Blastosaurus by Richard Fairgray and Paul Eiding, as well as Adventure Van by Michael McMillan and Ryan Cody at your local comic book store today. Visit the link in the description box below to support these amazing people. And we will get back to Carnage very soon. For those of you guys who are waiting for that, I have to finish reading Carnage USA. I want to get that fresh in my head before I start talking about it. And then we'll do Carnage Born, and that'll wrap out this you know two-week-long version of, uh, of Carnage Week for us. And we'll get back to Eddie Brock stories. We'll start doing the Versus videos after that, and we'll talk about any sequel news that we can get our hands on, including today. Um, but first, I want to talk about the $850 million that Venom has just crossed. And I felt like this was inevitable. It was going to happen. This was kind of where I predicted after like that first big boom uh, of how well the movie did in the first weekend of China. My guess was kind of thinking it was going to end up around 850 and it was going to fizzle out around this point. Some of you guys probably saw me tweet that. I was like, ah, it's probably going to get in the 850 ballpark. But they extended Venom in China because it's doing so well over there. I think Crazy Rich Asians finally came out in China and it bombed. <laughs> and actually Venom uh, was do still doing well, only like a 39% drop on its fourth weekend. And so since it has those kind of legs, China was like, you know what? We're going to extend it all the way to January 11th. And uh, today even, like we, uh, we have some news about Venom today, but I'll get to that in a second. But to see it, it get extended in China because it's still doing so well means that it'll still trickle in some money. And I think some analysts are predicting that it might end up around the 860 to $870 million marker, uh, which will put it up there next to Batman versus Superman. Holy cow, a Venom, a solo Venom movie made as much as two of the biggest superheroes in all of comic books. Um, that is just insane to me. That is insane to me, and I love it. I, like, I'm not salty about it. As you guys know, even though I gave the movie like a 7 out of 10, I still was like, oh, it, I see potential here. If they get, you know, a stronger script in the next one, they got a better villain in the next one, I think they could really bring it home and, uh, and elevate the sequel to be way better than the first one. And I felt like this was a good starting point. And I get what the movie was going for. It was kind of, you know, goofy. And it kind of captured the essence, I feel, of a lot of the comic books that we've read on this channel going through the history of Venom. And I think a lot of people go, oh, I know Venom. I know everything about Venom. And they, they're, they're in their head, they've painted this, like, very serious, intense tone. And it's like, yes, that's one version of Venom. But like all comic book characters, there's multiple versions. And I would say throughout the 90s, uh, there were moments where he was intense and serious, but mostly it was like this really goofy, over-the-top, you know, mullet-having, you know, Eddie Brock. And it was a fun time. It was a fun time in comics. And so that movie, I felt like this movie kind of captured that a little bit. And it looks like most audiences were willing to give it a shot. I mean, Venom has enough brand recognition. Think about that. His name is a household name, uh, even now more so. Uh, but enough to make this kind of money just proves that that he doesn't need Spider-Man to be a success. And uh, and this movie proved it 100%. And I know a lot of you guys want to see Spider-Man show up in future films, and I think they talk about that. I've seen some rumors going around that some people are speculating that, that you know that Spider-Man might show up in future films. Um, but I don't know. I don't think he has to. I don't think at least Peter Parker has to, or at least a Peter Parker from the MCU uh, universe. Because if you see Into the Spider-Man, which it comes out this weekend, I highly recommend that you go see it. There's definitely a possibility for a multiverse storylines, and you can have a Spider-Man from any of those universes pop up in a Venom movie, I feel. Uh, so to me, I'm like, no, stick with your Venom, and if you want to bring in Spider-Man, bring in like a live-action Miles Morales, or bring in, you know, like a, a, a Spider-Man from the future, you know, whatever. Like, to do something different um, than what we've seen, you know, before. Um, but I know that some of you guys might not like that, so if you disagree with me, definitely let me know in, in the comments down below. Uh, but as far as Venom news that came out today, Venom is available digitally. Today you can buy the movie digitally uh, here, I think in the U.S., maybe even worldwide, I believe. I don't know. Um, so you guys have to correct me on that one if that's not the case. But it is available digitally on the PlayStation Store uh, for today, December 11th. And uh, I think it's like 20 bucks. It comes with a free theme. We mentioned this before. Someone told me that the theme isn't actually that impressive. So if you're buying it for that reason, which I was gonna, uh, they said not to. So what I'll probably do is just next week, a week from today, um, December 18th, we are going to get the Blu-ray movie. And I'm going to tr probably try to hit Walmart on my way to work and pick up the one with the action figure. And if I have enough money, which I don't right now, but if I you know end up you know um, 
you know, like being able to squeeze some money or use it on my, maybe put it on my credit card or something. I might also, while I'm at work, buy the Target version with the photo book. Uh, but that's like second to me. I want the one with the action figure. So I'm probably going to go hunt that one down at Walmart on my way to work next week. Um, but yeah, so, you know, go watch the movie if you haven't seen it yet. It's available digitally today. Pick it up, watch it, uh, and uh, check it out. I think you get it on Amazon, iTunes, you know, the PlayStation Store, Xbox, I'm sure. Um, so go, you know, buy it, watch it. I, I really want to see uh, the, the sales of the DVD and the Blu-rays and the digital copies be really well and profitable for uh, for Sony. And I think they're going to be. And we'll definitely do a report on that in, you know, maybe like in a month or so in January when we start getting numbers in. Uh, and then after the movie leaves the theater in January in China and other countries, uh, we'll do a final box office, uh, you know, video as well to see if it hit that 860, 870 marker. Um, and then the last thing I want to talk about, I'm going to put a link to this down below, Discussing Film. Um, our friend Nick, who uh, gave us a shout out, I believe, on uh, the, um, the, the oh, what was it called? The Hybrid Network? Yeah, so sorry. I'm like, I'm really tired. I just woke up and I've had a long day yesterday. Um, but yeah, Hybrid Network, they gave us a shout out like almost uh, about eight months ago now on their channel. And I actually got to meet, uh, you know, Nick. I think this was, I, and again, Nick, I'm sorry, you know, brain surgery and, and bad memories. Uh, but I think I met Nick when we saw Tom Hardy at that screening. Uh, when me and Andrew went to the screening of Venom and Tom Hardy showed up with Ruben Fleischer, I think we met Nick there too, and he and I talked a little bit. And um, he actually scored this interview. Uh, and again, I'm hoping this is all the same guy. Again, my memory is for crap, so I apologize because the guy was so nice to me giving me that shout out, and I feel really bad if I'm getting all this information wrong. Um, but Nick was able to, to do an interview with Jeff Pinkner, who's one of the screenwriters, of Venom, and I'm going to put a link down below to the to the uh, video. It's on YouTube, uh, on Discussing Films YouTube channel, and I'll put a link to their Twitter account down below. Make sure you follow them and also subscribe to them on YouTube for other great videos and content. And uh, and this was great. It was uh, just a cool little interview with uh, Jeff Pinkner, and he asked him about like, hey, what was it like writing a script of Venom without Spider-Man? What was your approach to it? And then is there a Venom sequel in development? And Jeff says yes, it's in development as of right now. Jeff is not writing it, uh, but it is in development. And uh, so that's good to know. I mean, I've, I figured that was the case, uh, obviously. Um, but uh, but this in development just means that they're probably doing some storyboard art. They're probably working on some of the behind the scenes stuff, probably doing some designs for Carnage, uh, probably, you know, shopping around ideas with producers of like what kind of story they want to tell, where they want to take the characters, uh, you know, reaching out to Woody Harrelson, Tom Hardy, locking in the cast. You know, there's going to be stuff like that over for the next couple months because, and then obviously the script is going to be written um, probably starting uh, January of next year. They're probably going to sit down and, pro you know, start writing it and start hashing out like the beats and everything. And that'll probably go through the whole production process of Zombieland 2, because as we know, Ruben Fleischer right now is directing Zombieland 2, and I imagine Sony's going to want him back for Venom 2, and I hope so, because I thought he did a great job, uh, you know, uh, you know, filming the movie, obviously, and then Matty Levitique, who is a phenomenal uh, cinematographer, I would like to see him shine more in the sequel. I thought he did some good stuff in this one, but I, you know, sometimes things were cut too quickly or moved too quickly, and I, you weren't getting like that that amazing look. I'm Maddie Libatique, also a cinematographer of A Star Is Born, and that movie I finally saw looked beautiful, like just really great shots in that movie. And so I hope he gets to shine a little bit more if he comes back as a cinematographer. I hope he does. Uh, but if he does, I hope he gets a little bit more, uh, you know, shine in it to to really capture. Because I want to see Carnage looking really visceral, really nasty. I want to see Maddie Libatique's eye capture that in a really unique way. And I want to see that pop. I want the second movie to be better than the first movie. Um, and so hopefully that's what Sony's working on. And hopefully they're getting all their cards in a row. And that's what will be happening soon. So in development just means the beginning stages. While Ruben Fleischer's filming Zombieland from like January to like March or something. Or maybe January to February. Who knows how long that production is. But he's going to be filming that movie for a couple months. And then while that's happening, they're going to be writing the script and going into pre-production for Venom 2. They'll probably call Ruben in from time to time to look over stuff, or they'll email him stuff. And then once he's done working on uh, Zombieland 2, he will then, you know, hopefully be accessible to come over and work in Venom 2. So, yes, great interview. If you want to see it, there's some information down there about the Amazing Spider-Man movies, because Jeff Pinkner also was a co-writer on some of those. And, uh, and then, like, some plans that they were going to do for the third one. And he was also ex executive producer on the uh, Cowboy Bebop, I think, Netflix show that's coming out. So make sure you check that interview out. Nick did a great job. I want to definitely you know, send some guy, some love to that guy because he sent a lot to us at one point and uh, helped us grow as a channel. And it means a lot to me when people do that. So uh, definitely check that out and subscribe to Discussing Film and Hybrid Network. I'll put their link down below too. 
So that's all I got for today. This has been a long enough video, a lot of information that came out. So I wanted to make sure I covered all of it for you guys. So you had a good video to start off for this week. And then we will get to the, the Carnage stuff. I'm going to go read Carnage USA right now. And we're going to get into that. And I'll do that in probably my next Venom video. And then I'll probably do some Spider-Verse videos. I got some Spider-Man toys, uh, some with Carnage in them too. I got some Venom toys. Uh, so we will get into all that stuff uh, as soon as possible. So thank you guys for being so patient with me. Let me know what you think of all this down below. Are you excited? Venom 2, officially in development. We knew that was going to happen. But what do you think about the $850 million? And where do you think it'll end? Do you think it'll hit 860 or 870 Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.